So, let us start this lecture number 4 of this module and this will be the last lecture of this module. In this, I will be discussing about the reactive power control and the grounding electrodes and also I will discuss little bit about this your the DC wires that is your pole what we are going to use. What is the difference between the AC wires and the DC wires? Only I will give the salient features on that. So, starting this the reactive power control already we have seen the converters or even though inverters are consuming reactive power and the reactive power basically what happens in the converter station? We can say it is just like a leading power factor, leading in the sense the flow direction of Q will be reverse of the P. So, here this is your if it is a rectifier and this is your inverter means I want to say that this is your three phase connection with this. So, your P here it is flowing in this direction, but the Q we require from the system because we have to provide the reactive power support because it consumes reactive power from the source. So, it is again your concept what you are just treating means whether this is also giving reactive power to this the system is giving, but this as a load it is consuming. So, that is why we are saying here this is your P minus J Q I am writing means the Q power we have to supply here which is consumed by this one. Similarly, your inverter. So, but in principle here it is a leading power factor at the both end means it is there is a consumption of Q. The main culprit who are this consuming the reactive power no doubt this is your transformer it is having a reactance <coughs> and at same time this your valve impedance along with this is a contributing for your reactive power consumption and that is basically reflected in terms of U. We have seen that is the overlap angle because this overlap angle is basically taken care of this value of reactance as well as whatever the impedance of your valve it is going to be. So, that is why it is written here this leads to where the current lacks the voltage. We have also seen here the cos phi that is a power factor can be approximated it is very close to your whatever this is the delay angle cos alpha plus your cos delta by 2. This is basically proved in the previous our analysis based on the principle that we are assuming the P A C is equal to your P D C your converter is lossless. So, it was proved if you are having the delay angle if you are not having delay angle then this cos phi is equal to your cos alpha and here that is why. So, this due to this there is some approximation here because this is not a sudden change. So, this is very approximate to this power factor. Now, this power factor here can be also written or you can say if this is a power factor then we can say our reactive power requirement here it will be nothing but your the DC power multiplied by here sorry it is your tan phi it is not cos phi it is the tan phi. This is the tan phi of this we have to provide the reactive power thus we can prove it also. How it is happening? You can see this Q this is your P this is your Q this is your phi. So, in terms of Q we can write what will be this Q from here itself it is a tan phi. So, the reactive power requirement is basically I can say it is a tan phi into your P and P is a either you can write DC or AC because this we have proved on this principle and we have assumed this lossless. So, we can write the P DC. So, whatever the DC power there this power factor is tan phi of this is going to add it. Thus, we can also write another relation of overlap angle in terms of here is a function of operating current and the converter transformer leakage reactance. The leakage reactance here is XL and the current here this is a rated current of the link, but if you are not flowing the rated current due to certain region. Normally, we maintain the current in the link, but if you are operating your link at the half flow they are somewhere even though less current then your this U value will be also different we have seen the U is directly related what is the current in the DC link. 
So, if this is in the per unit, these are also in the per unit, we can have this relation, this u overlap angle is the cos inverse here in this fashion. Now, you can see what is this? It is very similar to our expression here that we write here Vd, this is your Vdo here into cos alpha plus cos delta by 2. It is related to this in a somehow because you can see this cos inverse if you are taking this if you are adding this alpha here and taking cosine. So, you are getting from here it is your cos delta is equal to your cos alpha minus I d over I d naught here into x l. Is the equation of the current? The ID, ID equals to IS2 into cos alpha. Current, yeah. It is similar to the current, yeah. It is similar to the, not even the voltage equation. It is a ID just we have written like this expression, yeah. So, this is basically similar to this means it is a dependent upon U and this expression that can be seen. Also, in order to meet the AC harmonics performance, each filter is switched at the certain DC power transmission level known as upper control. What I want to say that when your load is increasing in this DC link, your filters are normally switched in in such a way that it can provide the required reactive power support. So, the switching instant you can see it is normally it is here. You see this is a curve, this is a power, your real power is increasing in the this is a DC basically DC power in the link is increasing, you are keep on switching you know one filter, two filter and three filter accordingly, so that you can provide more and more your reactive power support. Why it is also happening? If the power is increasing, the current AC current is also increasing means your harmonics magnitude is also increasing at the same time. So, if one filter here is there, then we can switch another filter here if more power is flowing of the same magnitude. I am talking if the fifth here, so fifth is also here switched. So, we are having more so that it can be the, that can because the rating of the filters may be a particular current. So, you are adding another parallel so current is higher. And but we require more reactive power support also. So, the reactive power is also increased up to that level. So, the here the filters are switched based on your the power flow. Normally, the variation if it is a long distance power transmission over the DC line, the power is normally maintained at the particular level. Means, suppose it is a 1500 megawatt power, it normally flows more than 1000 power. So, that switching is very rare, one or two is sufficient. But if you are starting from 0 and it is a huge variation like you are having back to back connection. So, it is every time it can this side, that side and keep on changing, then you have to keep on switching even though your filters as well it is set here. Now, you can see your operation of the voltage. What happens as we know to increase the power or the decrease power, we prefer to maintain the current because we do not want to change U because once U is changing, then you are putting more and more reactive power support. So, we do your voltage change and then you can see if the DC power varies, the voltage is changing from the minimum voltage to here it is the maximum voltage and it is obvious that P D C here it is equal to your V D C into I D C. So, this we are changing and this is normally kept constant, this can also vary depending upon the your change of the this is a suppose is working as inverter, then we have to change the margin or if the voltage is very low, then we have to go for the V D call area and then we have to reduce the current as well. But the normally we maintain this current here and voltage. Now, you can see the upper limit here, this is the maximum value here is limited by your the delay angle. Because here this DC here it is nothing but your video cos alpha minus your that component R C I D. So, this depends what is this maximum value here if alpha is the minimum and that is the control what is the 5 degree or 2 degree accordingly. So, this upper limit is that is why it is written upper limit is defined by the minimum operating delay angle. However, the lower limit how much you can go basically if the voltage is very much reduced. What happens here this even though inverter side here this may be the recovery voltage is not sufficient and this may there is a lot of commutation failure and this may not survive. 
Here also we see the transient voltage condition that we can go up to this minimum voltage otherwise if you are switching the here converters more transient will be arising and there may be problem. So that is why here it is a practically experience the lower limit is defined by the maximum <coughs> voltage transient that can be applied to the converter basically we are talking here rectifier resulting from the firing voltage of a rectifier or the recovery voltage of inverter. This side the recovery voltage is very important because the <coughs> voltage is very small this converter operation is very uh, this inverter operation is very very difficult. So, this limit minimum limit basically decided by that, but upper we know it very well it is a delay angle again it is your either alpha or beta based on that it is decided. However, in the switching here this is not only that there is a certain that you have to keep on switching there is also a guidelines that if you are switching a filter here how much voltage because you are changing the reactor here the reactive power injection you are feeding here what happens due to this you have to see how much voltage rises there and that is it is defined at the step change in the voltage is also seen he, you can see here and that is a defined as here means another requirement is imposed on the reactive power control is that AC voltage step change should not exceed uh, specified AC voltage of this voltage. So, it is it is that is how much reactive power that is the Q switch here it is a defined at the reactive power step to be imposed that you are switching this value divided by the short circuit level at that point minus the total reactive power including this which is going to be switched. So, what is there plus this it is included here and this basically gives you a rise in the voltage at that bus. So, this is also governed if you are switching here if voltage is rising then you should wait then you can the previous one will be continue till you are going. So, this is always calculated this change step change voltage is should not exceed much beyond but the, because that may create another problem in the operation of the HVDC link. Now, let us come to this your the grounding and the grounding electrodes. Already I have discussed about the what are the advantage of the grounding as you know that we are saving one wire if we are operating in the monopolar operation is obvious. Apart from that here that is the grounding path has a very low resistance and if grounding it is designed properly it is a really very low resistance and it occurs very less loss compared to even your wire. Because if you are putting a wire metallic wire then the return path is this you just imagine a monopolar operation this is wire this is your return path. So, whatever the conductor you are using it has some resistance and this metallic path you are just going here if you are using this this has even the significant resistance and if you are, you are designing an electrode very properly because this distance is very high all the value is very less. So, if you are using ground here even though that resistance is lesser than this metallic resistance and therefore, I square R loss is less. So, it is said it is less lossy if you are using ground properly ground otherwise you just put your wire on the ground it will not go. Another advantage here the bipolar lines is more economical compared to the two monopolar. What I want to say that we know that if you are using the bipolar it is economical in the several sense because you are using the this is monopolar if you are having here another converter means we can use here another bridge and this is your if this is a positive this is negative and this is your ground. So, the current is flowing no doubt this and ground is not used. Now, the cost of this is always cheaper compared to this monopolar here. Why? Because you are using the grounding system here, here also grounding only one grounding is sufficient for this portion and for this portion and also the converter station is going to be cheaper. For example, if you are going for one big machine and you are going for a smaller smaller of the same total capacity that will be more expensive it is obvious reason. So, this in this no doubt the grounding is not used bipolar is cheaper. So, and you know this bipolar can operate of a monopolar 
if there is some problem here at the same time this can be even though started in the phase wise. Phase wise means you have one monopolar right now one pole you are not even the using and you are using ground as a return you can go for the another pole remove this and grounding should be there. So, it is advantage in that sense that if you are installing your device uh, this HVDC link in the phases the bipolar then one pole you can have in the beginning with the help of the ground electrodes. Anyway, we have to have the ground electrode because if there is some problem in any of this pole it should pass through here. So, we can use another one in the stages. So, that is why here it is said that it is economical and moreover the bipolar line can be constructed in the stages and that is you can achieve the advantage of this. This bipolar link no doubt this ground you can use, but it can be even the used as a let us suppose there is some problem in this converter link here. What we can do and if you do not want to use the ground because using the ground it has no doubt some problems because there will be some interference and other things, but we can use this wire as well. We have the bypass for all this here the bridges because once you want to maintain it we have the bypass switches here, we have the bypass switches here as well. So, we can just bypass and we can use this current should flow here rather than this. You can see this construction here in this diagram how it is realized here. You can see we want this is a bipolar operation here let us suppose this is a plus and minus poles are there. Now, you can see this bridge and this bridge is open and we are connecting this switch D here means here you can see means current is basically flowing here and it is going here, it is going here and coming here. But if you are this, this breaker, this is a breaker, this is a this metallic breaker this, uh, resistance breaker here if you are close here there is a possibility that the current will flow here rather than here because the resistivity if the resistance of this path is less than the metallic path here then it will go here. So, what we do we just if you want to use this you have to switch open so that the current can pass here. We use some other surge some pressure etcetera for opening here. So, this is basically that we can use and we can bypass this completely and you can use this metallic wire if required, but if you do not want to use then suppose there is a fault in the line there is no other option you have to close this you have to open this and the current will flow here in the half of the bridge. So, this scheme is also there means in the bipolar that is why it is more advantageous if you want to use the ground wire you can use if the fault is in the line then you have to go use the your ground wire here and the ground electrodes are there where the current can flow if required. The major disadvantage of this here as we have seen the design of the low resistance with the low cost installation and the maintenance of the grounding electrodes are difficult. The major problem is to design and to get you know it is you have to bury the conductor, you have to put lot of chemicals, you have to see the soil condition at that place and also it should be very away the location etcetera is very important. So, that is why the location and the screening of the electrode must be properly carried out so that we can minimize the corrosion, corrosion of the even the electrode rods and also other equipments those are grounded there maybe some transformer is a star connected transformer it is grounded. So, so many other devices are there, there is maybe even the pipes are going some water pipes etcetera there, cables are inside there. So, lot of problems even though in seed there may be some current etcetera may induce. So, the corona can be minimized and also the step and the touch, step voltage and the touch voltage should be within permission limit. Because if a person who is suppose some current is flowing in the ground and the person is just stepping in, so there is some 1 meter distance what is the potential normally it is said that 6.5 volt per meter should be the allowable it should be less than that and the touch voltage is the uh, potential at that point what will be there it is normally 5 volt per meter is permissible with this. Another we will see here the what is the touch voltage etcetera. Another problem here that is the interference with the ground current with the other AC system because you are having the AC wires you are having AC substations AC lines are there that frequency may introduce some current in your DC current as well your the railway signals are there that high frequency may be induced in that ground wire and it will raise some potential and other things in that wire uh, in that uh, grounding current. 
So it is so many other things also <coughs> interference is also a concern if current is flowing through the ground. Now to what is obvious that we require an electrode should have certain property the first and the foremost that it should have the low resistance. Now here I am talking about the electrodes. Electrodes again can, can be of two type one is maybe your vertical and another may be horizontal. What is the vertical and what is horizontal? Here this is your earth, your this is electrode inside and you have connected with the some wire here this is electrode and this is inside this this is the electrode. This is the horizontal electrode normally it is worried here 1.5 meter to sometimes 10 meter. Another is called the vertical electrode it is your ground here you are putting an electrode here in the ground here and this is connected here and then you just free heat here the current will follow because we have to go at to certain level where this is the resistivity of the earth is the minimum and this length it may be even though sometimes approximately 50 meters or more than that. So this is a vertical electrodes this is a your horizontal electrodes in the, that is a buried in this ground. Argental, how much distance? Uh, it is approximately 50 kilometers 10 to 50 kilometers. Side, Both sides yes. Even though the location of this is decided how much we are going away. We will see in the next slide. So we are talking about the electrodes here because the surrounding of this earth where you are putting that is another concern where you are going to put here because what is the resistivity of this material here earth at that time. What is the resistivity here as well? So the total resistance offered by whatever the current which is flowing here it will be basically this resistance plus the resistance of your earth soil so many things. So what we do we design this we even though earth soil is not perfect we put so many chemicals and other things so that we can minimize the resistivity <coughs> and therefore we can even though its area can be more wider so that we can the current um, the current can have a wider path and it is has low resistance. Now another requirement that it should have the sufficient current carrying capacity because you know the current which is we know it is normally this 1 kilo ampere. <coughs> the current the DC current in the link is in kilo amperes. So what we require suppose this kilo ampere huge current is flowing and that is the DC current of course no doubt if it is AC current we require more thicker wire. If it is your DC current because this DC current the uniformly distributed in the electrode. So but we require this is a carrying capacity here this should offer the less resistance because the normal resistance of which is seen by here to another one means between this point to this point here the resistance this is called R earth resistance it is your electrode length resistance plus the resistance of earth. So if you are minimizing this this you have a very limited control so normally we try to keep it here because this is certainly it is very less. So it should have a sufficient current carrying capacity. We will also see if we are not having the sufficient current current capacity then what will happen. Means the resistance of this electrode is high what happening the current is flowing there is I square R loss mind it this loss is not dissipated properly because it is not exposed to air. If a conductor on the top even though there is I square R loss it is uh, just it is dissipated in the air as a freely there is temperature ambient there. So it is a release of the energy but here what happens this is heated then here both sides is heated and the chemical etc what you are putting even though resistivity of the soil will change resistance will change. So we should have even the wider so that is very depth and the very wide wires are it is a you know pipes are used for the DC here. Another condition is the low maintenance cost means no doubt the maintenance here what are the maintenance because the maintenance here there is a required that you have to put some water some chemicals so that if the heats are there here that you know, soil <coughs> resistivity is changing so you have to maintain this and also 
other cause like the joints here there is a corrosion in the pipes etc that should be maintained suppose you want to change it you have to replace so maintenance cost should be also le easy uh, less that is also required another is the easy accessibility what we do here this even though electrodes are not worried in the substation itself because in the if you are putting in the substation there is a lot of possibility because other ac equipments are there certainly you will have a lot of problem so what we do we try to put this electrode somewhere on the way because you can see this is your tower where the conductor is let's suppose this is a conductor is going we are having so many towers this is hanged here so it is going so what we do here we go for a neutral wire and at certain this is near to substation your substation is this so we go somewhere and then we put the grounding so that this can be there so normally it is said it is away from 10 to 50 kilometers depending upon we have to see what is the resistivity of the soil at that point because your substation normally near to very near to is huge generating stations where you have to evacuate the power so at that time suppose you are like in our country if you are having Singlauli Rihan, it is very stone and other areas, so it is very difficult. So we come here in the plain side where the rest of it is less, and we put this grounding electrodes there. So it is 10 to 15 kilometers away, depending upon the size. So the assessed, easy accessibility that you have to see where you are having the grounding that you can easily assess it, you can maintain it, and you can just inspect it if there is no problem there. So easy accessibility here related to the location of the grounding. So it should be easily accessible with the road, transport, etc. So that you can monitor and maintain the properly. That's why here, this is here written this 8 to 50 kilometer away from this. This is also here the minimum damage to other services. Means here if you are putting here, there is a most likely that it may damage your other equipments. Because the corrosion, here you are having this lightning arresters that is going to grounding, earth mats are there. So a lot of problems are there. So what we do we again put some far away so that we can the damage can be minimized safety of the personal here of course that is a touch point because the current is flowing so there is some potential gradient because there is a resistance so that should be that's why here the step voltage it is said it is a safer limit <coughs> less than 6.5 volt per meter a person who is walking this is expected one meter is distance between the two touch points and also the maximum gradient at the land electrode here at that point where it is should be your 5 volt per meter. That can be seen here in this diagram here. You see uh, from here this is the electrode which is buried uh, in this here this is earth. So if you see the potential that is the gradient which will be varying here it will be like this E is like this. This variation depends upon which type of rod you are using. You are using the hemisphere, you are using a circular, something, some ball is inside, it is your horizontal. So this variation basically is changing in the shape, but the, uh, here can the slope here, but the shape will be almost same. Here at this center it will be the minimum and the both side here because the flux is here linking current is going. So this E will be there and again you will find it is a decline. So this is your field E and this is X from here to this. You will find there is this one distance here H where you will find the highest E max and this value is basically coming out to be I think H upon under root 2. This value yeah. This value X here is your H upon under root 2. Now what is the H? H is basically the where it is worried. This is H is from the ground, this is the center of this conductor. So this value is normally your, it is your H by under root 2. So if it is a more deep, this distance will be more here, but and this magnitude also depends upon this. So if you are going to deeper and deeper, this magnitude will be lesser and the, it is almost, this will be the flat here. So that is why we go as deep as possible, again we have to see the cost should be minimum. Now you can see the 
it is said that the highest touch at the, this length, this value is this you are required. This should not be your more than 5 volt per meter. And this step touch, you know, this is 1 meter distance between the leg. Here is normally it is said a person who is walking. Here this that point and this point is approximately 1 meter and you can say that is why it is written 1 meter and this is called the step voltage and step voltage is said it should be not more than here. This is a permissible limit. If it is more than that, a person can feel a huge shock. So, this is the potential of a conductor which is buried inside. You can see it is varying both sides in this way. Although he is not touching the conductor, but only he is walking here, he will feel the E, the field at the different magnitude. Surprisingly, once he is coming just standing on the ground, he is experiencing this 0. You can see if he is coming at the very just here, this E is 0, but just here at this distance, it is more and that can be proved also. We will see later on, slightly about this. Now, let us see how to calculate the grounding resistance. The grounding resistance here, let us suppose we have a hemisphere conductor, half of this it is on the ground. This is a conductor. We will see once it will go down also later on, but here to see this, this is your uh, conductor of having hemisphere this and it is a radius is A, the resistance will be this much. How to prove it? We can just calculate this current density. The current which is flowing through this conductor is your ID. So, the current density J is nothing but your ID by your S and the surface area of hemisphere is it is ID, it is twice pi r square this sphere is there, it is a 4 pi r square, the surface area half of this is 2 pi r square if you remember. Now, so this is your the surface area of hemisphere we are talking, of the area is the conductor of hemisphere this. I want to calculate what will be the potential here the P at this point. Let us calculate first field E, E is nothing but your rho into J then we can calculate the potential difference. This is the equipotential surface because once current is flowing here, so it will have the equal potential surface of hemisphere like this, it is obvious. And we are assuming here the resistivity of this earth is uniform. There may be different layers of resistivity, then it will be the different. Here if you are having the same resistivity <coughs> rho, so it will be the rho will be multiplied by j, it will be your E and we can say here it is your rho i d over twice pi r square, it is your E. So, the potential is you know is calculated the negative of work done here from bringing from infinite to at any point r here. So, we can write here this v r, it is a minus coming from infinite to at any position r E into dr here just a small distance here with r into dr here because it is coming here some section dr we are taking. So, just put it here and if you are putting this value how much you are getting this rho i d twice pi r negative will go because it is 1 upon this r square. Now, at point E. At this point, what is E? So, we have to put this A. So, I can say the V E is the, your this rho I D over twice pi A. That is the maximum basically that because inside again it is 0. This is a solid conductor. So, is the conductor inside the field will be 0. So, the maximum will be here, the potential difference. Now, from here what we can do? Now, your R e, it is nothing but what is the current going inside this. So, your V into I d is the earth resistance for the hemisphere and then it will be divided by I d means we are getting twice rho upon this A value. This is the case 
when we are having the uniform this is the case of here this uniform resistivity of earth here this oh sorry here rho and that is why here I have written. So, let us see if your in this case itself if it is not uniform means if your resistivity is changing and it is changing basically yeah, up to certain kilometer the resistivity is different if you are going deeper and deeper if you are going in the crest it is very less. So, upper surface is highest if you are going inside inside earth the resistivity is changing. So, if you are going for the different resistivity here what we have to do in calculating the voltage only the E will be same it is independent of the resistivity. So, your V which you are calculating here it is your minus you are calculating from infinite to here this some distance B where it is a row 1. So, I can say row 1 here I d divided by your what was the, your equation 2 pi r square into d r plus here your B to A you are coming out to the conductor and then it is your row 2 I d over twice pi r square and it is your d r. So, you can calculate this V in this fashion if you are having the different layer of this. If you are having the uniform then then this row will have also with a function of x or you can say a function of r and then you have to calculate accordingly. Here it will be r. So, this will be like this. So, you can calculate and again then you can calculate your r e accordingly that is v upon your i d will be the earth resistance for the different value. So, either you are having the different resistivity of the earth non-uniform or you are having the one which is changing with the x or r then you can take that expression and then you have to take care. So, not normally it becomes logarithmic if it is a uniformly changing here. Now, let us come to this if conductor is buried means inside now you can say now conductor is not on the sphere here it is there. Now, what happens now the field here it is in this fashion. So, this calculation of the resistance effective resistance is considered as the image of the conductor, but here is the image is not image of charge no doubt the current is the flow of charge. So, here if this is a conductor we are taking this is the image. So, the resistivity of this earth is also taken here it is no doubt it is seen as a in air, but the resistivity it is assumed the same resistivity here. For example, if you are having the three different one. So, we take the same resistivity it is not resistivity of the earth. So, this is your h distance of your conductor which is varied this is a conductor of radius a we are having here and we are assuming this is a spherical conductor if <coughs> it can be a cylindrical it can be spherical. So, it is assumed that is spherical. So, now we have a image conductor here and we have to calculate the different point here what is the e at this point it is it will be cancelled and e will be in the this direction. So, the total here this potential will be that of the two function one will be corresponding to this itself it will be 1 upon a rho upon 4 pi here 1 upon a why it is 4 not 2 because we it is a full sphere earlier it was a hemisphere. So, it was 2 pi r square now if it is a sphere it is a 4 pi r square. So, your the voltage here that is the v corresponding to the itself it is nothing but your rho over 4 pi a this is a is the radius of this is sphere and now due to this the potential here will be now it is a 2 h it is a now this is very very small compared to 2 h. So, this distance is counted and this will be your rho upon 2 pi 4 pi into 2 h this distance will come into them because this will be the flux here it is assumed that it is the linking here this conductor here. So, this voltage just like a calculation of inductances and capacitances in the power system we have studied same concept here. So, here that is why 2 h is going to come appear here and you can say resistivity here only the concern here the resistivity of the earth is taken as a uniform here although it is air image we have assumed, but the, you have to take the same resistivity because the ms we are taking here the current. So, this will be if uh, a spherical electrode is there. So, we have to consider in this way. If you are taking as a cylindrical that is becomes very very complex you cannot solve very easily like this. 
then you have to use the finite element method etc and then you can approximate you can try it and then finally you can get so it will get the very complex that's why here i have left this expression because we we cannot derive so easily although it can be derived but again the derivation will be similar to what we are using here you have to use the image conductor if it is cylindrical then you have to use the cylindrical they are cylindrical and then you have to calculate accordingly Now, let us see the parameters of what we of the ground electrodes where you are going to put. We saw the characteristic required for the electrodes. It should be cheap and other things, low maintenance, etcetera, about the low resistance, etcetera. But the parameters which are the basically concerned about the designing of the ground electrodes, we have to have a very good choice of the site. And as I said, the site should be at such place where the resistivity of earth should be uh, small. We should have the easy accessible and also we have to see the cost at that point will be less. So, all the parameters related to the choice of the site. Now, this electrode materials, whether you are going to use a <coughs> copper, whether you are going to use aluminum, whether you are going to use iron, what material you are going to use. If you are using <coughs> copper, it is no doubt the resistance will be very less, but very expensive and we require the very wider area. So, you can use even the iron sample with the very large dia and it can solve the same but you have to see the cost etc. So, the material is also very important that you have to choose. If you are going to more depth inside, you can just compromise between the resistance of this electrode plus because you are going to add the earth resistance along with the total resistance. So, it is again it is a very decisive factor in terms of the cost that you are going to put. Another is the layout as yes, I told that what should be the save of your electrode. Means, it is whether the cylindrical or it is a spherical, it is vertical or it is horizontal. So, you have to decide because if you are going for your this is a vertical electrode, you have to go for 50 meters, it is very 50 meters more than that, you have to just bury it more than even 100 meters sometimes, depending on again the resistivity of earth. And you have to see the what should be the electrode resistance. So, normally we put so many chemicals along with the electrode so that to reduce even though there is a surface between the your con electrode and the earth there is some there should not be air bubble etcetera because that will again add the resistivity resistance will be more. So, we put some chemicals so that we can the flow of current should be uniform and we can reduce the resistance as such of electrode. Current current uh, carrying capacity already I explained we require huge current current capacity so that resistance should be less. The voltage rise of electrodes again this is a voltage rise is basically related to your the step touch means it should not the voltage rise at that time if the voltage is increasing current is flowing voltage is there that will make create havoc to the personal. Here it is also related to the near to the electrode if the potential should not be very high we saw that potential is varying the peak at certain distance and then it is decreasing. So, that magnitude also should not be high in any case otherwise that may even though your personal may be the safety is not assured. Another is related to your time constant time constant here I mean to say that the thermal time constant because if current is flowing in the your electrode there is I square R loss it is even the flowing to the your ground ground is also heated. So, and this radiation because we do not have a proper radiation of no doubt earth is there water may be there, but even though you are worrying here this resistance there is nothing inside it may be this something there it may be cooled down. So, effectively there should not be any thermal time constant means it should be perfectly all right that is why we put lot of chemicals to minimize this time constant also. So, heating etcetera we can maintain. So, these are the basically the parameter design for the ground electrodes. Now, once electrodes are designed then you have to go for your first one here I have to this the ground wires. Ground wires as well as we have to talk about the main wires. The design of the main wires you know we are having this is your the go conductor, we are having a return conductor. This is a normal wire we can think of, this is a basically AC conductor similar to AC conductor these conductors are also because they are operating on high voltage. So, if they are operating high voltage the major concern is your corona loss. No doubt the corona loss is less 
in case of DC line compared to the AC line. But since we are operating 500, 600 kilo volts, it is more corona loss. So, we have to have see the conductor should be the in a good size and the surface here smoothness should also be better because your rough surface is there means you are having more field at that point, more ionization, more corona loss. So, the conductor here almost designed almost similar like you are having a 400 kV line. 400 kV line what is the peak voltage? It is multiplied by under root 2. So, it is 6.5 uh, 650 kilo volts here line. So, it is designed here for this peak value, this design for the DC value here. So, your insulation etcetera here that is why required less. If when you are having 400 AC system here, your insulation, your this voltage etcetera designed for the peak value is not the RMS value. Here DC RMS and peak is same, so it is that is why it is cheaper. So, require the insulation level is also less, but we always try to minimize the corona loss. So, you will find even though for 500, you will find we use the bundle conductors because we want to have the more area so that ionization should be less. So, you will always find if you see the 500 here, it is the 4 bundle conductor, even though for the 400, you will find only 2. So, whenever you pass from here to Delhi, you will see the 2 conductors are passing just over the train, it is 2 wires means it is DC, it is high voltage towers and you will find the 4 here means it is a bipolar plus minus 500 in our country. This 400 in the AC, we use the 4 conductors for 765 equivalent to this. So, when you are going for higher and higher voltage, only concern here is your corona loss. There is no skin here because the DC, mind it. But still we here use the standard conductor to provide the maximum tensile strength, we use the steel wire inside. So, the line design is almost the same principle as the AC line design, there is no inductance calculation, capacitance will be there, the voltage is there, here the ground is there, there is some straight capacitances are there, absolutely that will be there, you cannot do anything with this. Even though from one line to another if it is a bipole, so we are having 110, 110 volts, uh, 1000 volts, kilo volts in between that is also capacitance is formed. But again here these are the charge stray, once it is charged there is no other current is flowing. Once line is charged, it is ok and capacitance are same. Unless until current is changing or voltage is changing, then the charging current will be the different. The ground wire here normally use as I said, it is a, is a small wire used over the, the ground wire. It is used for the different regions. It sometimes because your wires, this pole is exposed to air, exposed to lightning strokes, etcetera. So, on the tower we put the ground wire this ground here we put this all this towers are grounded after not all the towers we go for the alternate few 4 or 5 towers are grounded properly and the wire is flowing so that we can have provide some shielding 30 degree normally we provide the shielding whatever the strokes are coming it will be shared by the ground wire and it will be reflected and it will be going to the ground. But even though if there is a coming here then a substation also we have the lightning arrestor at the both end so that we can this impact of the lightning should not go to the substation and should be going to the grounded somewhere. So, the ground wires here basically used for the protection and also this ground can be used at the return for some time, some application. If there is some problem in the your neutral, you can use the ground wire. So, the ground wires are designed properly. So, in this, with this I should end in this module, this is module number 5. In I can summarize in this module, especially we saw this is uh, your reactive power. In this lecture, we saw the reactive power and the grounding spec. The before that, we used filters and harmonic analysis. First, we did harmonic analysis. We saw for the six pulse converter, we found this uh, characteristic harmonics. We also saw the uncharacteristic harmonic. Then we saw the various tuned filters and we saw the tuned filter design and its impedance, etc. We saw the in terms of quality factor. Then we also saw your band pass filters, those are also used at certain applications. So, this module that was the 4 lectures was devoted completely for your design, basically the filter and well the grounding wire. Already the DC reactors we saw in the previous module, in the your module number 4 and the reactors design etcetera, I discussed about how those are designed. So, with this 
I can stop it here and in the next module that is the module number 6, we will discuss about the AC DC load flow and I hope you are knowing your AC load flow that is clear to everybody. Now we are going to induct this AC is there because we are not going to only calculate the DC system because this transmission is always accompanied with the AC system. So, we are having the AC and DC. So, we have to see this how this DC is going to be incorporated in the AC system and how we can solve our AC DC load flow along with variables of your DC variables. That our DC variables are your angles, DC current, DC voltage and the various angles there is a delay angle, overlap angle, your gamma and your betas. So, that we will see in this next module. Thank you.